Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show you guys how to make your very own Mobius flower bracelet. This is a great beginner project if it's your first time doing chain mail or uh, first time even making jewelry at all. So let's go ahead and get started. To make this style of bracelet or necklace or whatever you're going to make it into, you'll need a couple of things. First off is pliers to open and close the rings. I'm particularly fond of my bent nose pliers and my stepped flat nose pliers. Links to all the different tools and materials that I'm using, as well as a link to our curated toolkit are down in the video description below. Um, you'll need a clasp. You can make your own out of wire, um, or you could purchase, I'm particularly fond of lobster claw clasps because they're very very secure and I'm very bad about snagging my jewelry on things so you can see it just has a little spring lever and it opens and closes there are also all sorts of different kinds of magnetic clasps and toggle clasps and all sorts of different things on the market and in general they all have a little loop on the end that you would attach uh, with a ring so whatever style of clasp you choose to go with you will need a jump ring that will fit through it. So fortunately with this size of clasp, which will be linked down below, um, it, the loop fits very comfortably the size of jump ring that they're using in this tutorial anyways. So speaking of which, um, this can be accomplished in a lot of different sizes of jump rings. I highly encourage y'all to experiment with what you maybe have on hand or, you know, just see what you like. Um, what I'm using here today are 16 gauge standard wire gauge, um, 5 sixteenths of an inch in the ring size. And for those of y'all who mind about aspect ratios, that is an aspect ratio of 5. So this would also be accomplished pretty well with um, the 18 gauge 7 seconds or the 20 gauge 3 sixteenths. So I feel like that would be a little... Uh, fragile, maybe you'd want to do that out of steel. Speaking of material, I am using anodized aluminum and bright aluminum today. Um, I like aluminum for whenever I'm teaching classes to folks who haven't woven chainmail before because it's pretty easy to work with, but you'll, you will want to make sure that your pliers don't have Sorry, trying to get the focus going. To make sure that your pliers don't have teeth because you want a nice smooth um, jaw of your pliers. That way you're not going to be marring up the surface of your rings. So to make the main component, which is a Mobius flower, uh, these are three petal Mobius flowers, but you could just as easily um, add in a fourth ring if you like. I just like the look of the three rings. And to make that, we're going to open two of our larger rings that 16 gauge 5 sixteenths, which speaking of which our other ring size that we're using is 16 gauge 1 fourth inch. So I really enjoy Chainmail Joe's ring sizer. Like it's so nice to just have on hand on your work desk. Takes up like no space at all. So on our larger rings, we're going to open two of them and close the third. To close the ring, you'll want to bring the ends together. Now this is a machine cut ring from the Ring Lord, so I'm never going to be able to get as perfect of a closure on this ring. You can see the little pinches that were removed as what we would with one like this one that is saw cut. And I'll show you that in a moment. So we're going to take our closed ring and hook it onto an open ring and I'm just using three different colors here because um, I think they're pretty but also so that you can kind of keep track of which which rings are which so to close I'm just you can hear that little click whenever your rings are saw cut and you can see that has a very nice gapless closure I really prefer saw cut rings in all of my work um, but whenever the rings are being cut the blade takes away just a small amount of material so sometimes whenever I'm wiggling my pliers back and forth I add a little bit of pressure towards the center just a bit I mean it's very tactile so the more that you practice the better you'll get at it 
but uh, to help kind of close that gap. And I also, we're going to demonstrate on the third ring, you can kind of see how these two rings make a little Venn diagram. So we want to just hook through both, just like that. And then we're going to close it. I absolutely love making Mobius flowers like this for like earrings or little dangly charms on bracelets or links in a bracelet like how we're doing here. Um, but you can see sometimes I'll wiggle back and forth until we get that really nice and you don't have to make it click I just have really bad eyesight and I like uh, hearing the click and then I'll pet it a bit to make sure that the both sides of the ring are on the same like plane I don't want it they might be butted up this way but if you turn it from the side I don't want any weird overlaps I want it nice and butted up that way so that is how we make a Mobius flower and sometimes it won't want to lay correctly like this one here like but you just tap it a bit and uh, like this guy's all kinds of, wow, well, I mean, that looks weird. But if you just tap it a bit, maybe flip one of the rings around. And it's just, uh, they just stack on themselves. So now for the rings that we're going to use to join them together. Also a nice variation on this design is to use um, wrapped bead links to join the Mobius flowers together. I think that's super cute. But we're just going to open up one. And I'm opening the I'm opening my rings at about I mean a 45 to 60 maybe degree angle. You don't want to open like too much because that gets kind of wonky. Um, though you do you. Uh, <laughs> but I found whenever I'm teaching, um, we get the highest success rate whenever people are opening at about that much. Because if you don't open it enough, you're gonna have a difficult time fitting your other rings through. So now we're gonna take one Mobius flower and hook through and then we're gonna pick up our over Mobi our <laughs> words are hard our other Mobius flower and hook it through when it whatever, whatever rings you decide to use you'll want to make sure that you can fit both of your Mobius flowers into one of your smaller connector rings without it being too tight because you don't want to I mean unless you're looking for that effect so now I'm just taking the same color of ring and hooking it through both of those Mobius flowers again and then closing it. And so now you can see we have a nice little chain of the Mobius flowers. I particularly love making this style with square cut steel rings for our connectors. They're hard on the hands, but they're beautiful. Um, and I get those from the ring board. And then I like to make the Mobius flowers out of brass, copper, and silver rings. And just that, that mixture of different metal tones, I think, looks so beautiful. So moving on to our next color, just hooking through one ring. And then hooking through all three rings of the Mobius flower. Just like that. And then we're going to close. And now I'm going to take that same color of ring, hook through one Mobius flower, and then rehook through where we just wove. Now also, you can make sheet mail out of this. So what I mean by that is um, we can, we're extending the pattern linear, like in a linear fashion this way. And we could also, by attaching and making it a little bit of a grid, we could... I'm going to lay out these bracelets for demonstration purposes. So see how we have our Mobius flowers stacked beside each other? We could go through and attach at this point and at this point, and at this point, and just keep weaving this into a sheet. And that would be super labor intensive, but I think it would be really, really cool. Definitely more of a decorative than functional chain mail, but uh, you know, sometimes that's got a time and place. <laughs> so just fun ideas, like your imagination is the, it, like there's no limit to what we can do uh, with chain mail. So if you can think of it, you can try it at least. And if it doesn't work, uh, well, we learned something. And if it does work, 
cool super cool we learned something to there too so we're gonna attach on just one more Mobius flower you could do something similar to this design and concept and structure where yes we are just attaching a, a chain of Mobius flowers basically but you could have a large medium and small Mobius flower and have it be like a dangle earring um, you could have it uh, with a teardrop bead hanging off of the end with the large, medium, and small Mobius flowers. I think that would look really cool. Um, so yeah, just endless possibilities, y'all. And so now to attach a clasp, what we would do is I'm going to take that same size of ring and I'm just going to hook it onto there and then I'm going to hook it onto the clasp. Now, sometimes you may want to go through with a slightly smaller ring if you don't want as large, like as much space right there. I'll show you on one of these ones. Now, on this one, we were using a smaller sized clasp, so we actually ended up using an 18 gauge 1 4 inch jump ring. That way it would fit through the loop, and I think we could have gotten away with using a 18 gauge, an 18 gauge 3 16 inch. Uh, 3 16 inch ring because that would have made it just a little bit of a smaller loop and sometimes I don't want as much space going on there um, but I mean that's basically just uh, designers choice at that point now you also want to make sure that the rings that you use to maybe add a little bit of extender chain to hook your clasp onto isn't so thick that you can't hook your clasp onto it And that's another reason why I really like the lobster claw clasps with chainmail is um, technically with chainmail you can hook anywhere along. So if uh, you have a particularly petite wrist but you like a longer bracelet, sometimes you could wear it longer, other times you could wear it much shorter. Um, it, it just gives you a lot of options. So that is how to make this chainmail bracelet. Hey y'all, thanks so much for hanging out with me in this video. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. All the links to the tools and materials that we've used, as well as to our website and social media, are down in the video description. Um, that way if you have any, like, if you want to contact us or anything like that, all that info is down there. Um, if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, please consider joining our Craft Along Club. We do all sorts of behind the scenes content, digital downloads for if you're into like leatherworking or jewelry template designs or anything like that. We also do monthly Craft Along kits um, as a subscription service, which that's very exciting. At the time of recording, that's kind of brand new um, alternative to Patreon. And um, we also do member exclusive live streams on Saturdays, which is a lot of fun. So be sure to check that out. It's our craft along club at backtoearthcreations.com. Um, and yeah, I think that's everything. So like, share, subscribe, ring my bell, do all that good stuff. Oh, we do, um, speaking of ringing bells, we have our own like notification newsletter that you can sign up for at our website. That way if YouTube's not that great about letting you know directly whenever our live streams start or if you aren't getting updated about our new tutorials that we post every Sunday, um, you can go to our website and sign up for our newsletter and get all sorts of different updates like that. As well as we are now doing premieres on Sundays with our tutorials. So if you're watching this and we're having the premiere, hey guys, thank you so much for hanging out. <laughs> um, it's, it's become a really fun part of Randy and I's kind of Sunday rhythm and to kind of just sit down with a cup of something good to drink and answer y'all's questions live while the video happens. That passed Vaughn's shot. Good job, girl, for doing your job. Um, <laughs> so y'all have a wonderful day and I'll see you in our next video. So until then, happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>